Historically, Fiat Chrysler hasn't had all that much of an interest in producing plug-in cars. Under the guidance of its former CEO, the late Sergio Marchione, Fiat Chrysler did the bare minimum required to ensure that it met all zero emission vehicle mandates in US compliance car states like California. To date, the only two cars with plugs that were available under the Fiat Chrysler brand were the Fiat 500e and the Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan, each sold in just enough numbers to keep regulators happy. But Marcione was far from happy about electric cars. He once famously begged customers not to buy the only purely electric car the company made, the Fiat 500e, because it was losing thousands of dollars on each car sold. Since Marcioni's death, however, there's been a gradual thawing towards plug-in cars with Fiat Chrysler bringing two new plug-in hybrid models, the Jeep Renegade PHEV and Jeep Compass PHEV, to the Geneva Motor Show, development of which would have started before Marcioni's death. Alongside these two plug-in models, Fiat Chrysler debuted a 100% electric concept car in the form of the Fiat Centoventi, described by Fiat as being, quote, democratic answers to electric mobility, its presence in Geneva didn't seem to suggest it would ever make it into production. In fact, most people dismissed it as nothing more than just another concept car we'll never see. And I felt the same way. After all, with a list of features that include a single livery that can be customised with a choice of different bumpers, wheel covers, wrappings, roofs and a modular dashboard that accepts different components in a plug-and-play manner that Fiat describes as being, quote, rather like the famous Lego blocks, that's Legos for those of you in the US, the Cento Venti didn't really strike me as a car that we would ever see in the real world. The only meritable feature I saw in it was its modular battery pack design, which Fiat Chrysler said could allow owners to easily expand their cars on board range by buying additional packs or even renting them for the occasional long distance trip. In the past few days, however, it's become apparent that the Fiat Cento Venti, which was named after the brand's 120 years of existence, wasn't quite as far flung as it might at first appear. Sure, its concept car interior and wacky customization options may go beside the wayside, but according to an interview with Top Gear, it appears FCA's chief marketing officer, Olivier Francois, wants us all to know that the Fiat Cento Venti, while an out-and-out -out concept vehicle, previews a very new, serious strategy that FCA is taking towards electric vehicles. Specifically, a strategy that involves making a next-generation all-electric Fiat 500 for 2020 onwards that will be, quote, very true to the spirit of the original 500. And by that, he doesn't mean the Fiat 500 as it stands today, but the first car to wear the Fiat 500 badge, the small rear-engined Fiat Cinquecento from the 1950s. The car that was absolutely a hoot to drive and also extremely affordable, as well as being able to lay claim to being one of the first ever cars designed primarily for city use. The current Fiat 500, largely unchanged since it debuted back in 2007, has earned itself quite a following around the world thanks to its retro styling, classic good looks and variety of engine choices from economical to downright out-and-out -out race ready. I'm a personal fan of the no longer made Fiat 500 Turbo and of course the all-electric limited market 500e which in my opinion is the best Fiat 500 of all for daily driving in a busy city. So, if a new all-electric Fiat 500 is going to look more towards the original 500, what could we expect? Well, first, I think a rear-wheel drivetrain with motor mounted on the rear axle is a given, especially as both Honda and Volkswagen are planning rear-wheel drive subcompact electric cars already. But what if that statement about the original Fiat 500 means something else? Like trying to invoke the original practicality, ease of use and flexibility of the original Fiat 500. And what if the only thing that really grabbed my attention about the Cento Venti concept, the battery pack flexibility, is the very thing that Fiat ends up using in its production cars? Then I think we'd be looking at something truly awesome, something that could truly shake up the electric car market. The Cento Venti's concept battery pack is modular, with each module not being super large in size. Fiat mentions a standard range of around 100 or so kilometres, which is tiny 
in modern terms. But when multiple modules are combined, Fiat suggests a range in excess of 500 kilometers might be possible. Granted, this is a concept car, and yes, it's unlikely that such figures would be achieved straight off the bat. But is Fiat about to do the one thing people have been asking me about for decades? Build an electric car with a modular battery pack that you can easily expand or shrink at whim to suit your needs. In showcasing the Cento Venti, Fiat suggests that the modular battery pack could be installed after purchase or temporarily hired for long distance trips from a service location, rather than out and out battery swapping, which requires a lot of extra hardware and expensive autonomous swap stations. I can envisage a battery swap out system that relies on trained technicians at dealerships instead. If battery hiring was an occasional thing for occasional trips, it could certainly work for customers. And for dealerships, it would be a bonus too, since they could gain an extra revenue stream to make up for the lost service revenue suffered as a consequence from the market shift away from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric ones. And with a smaller battery pack on board most of the time, a Fiat 500 with a small pack would be more efficient. But most importantly, and here's another thing the original Fiat 500 did, a new all-electric Fiat 500 that makes use of a modular battery system could actually cost less to buy, since it would come as standard with a smaller capacity 100 km or so battery pack. Smaller capacity means less expense incurred by the automaker, which in turn means a more affordable sticker price for the buyer. Given that most people are expected to live in cities in the not-too-distant future, in fact, most already do, who really needs a daily driver that can travel several orders of magnitude further per charge than the average daily car commute? Are you excited about the possibility of a new Fiat 500? What would you like to see it offer? And what features of the Cento Venti do you think we might see migrating into a production Fiat 500? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or you didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single episode. And if you'd like to support this channel, there are three ways you can do that. Patreon, Ko-fi, or by buying something from our shop. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.